it's finally time for Harry Potter in Japan. It's open, so they have a lot of different sets back here. And I am dressed as my house, which is Ravenclaw. I learned how to tie a tie just for this on that one YouTube video everyone watches. Um, I have a scarf too, but it's like 35 <laughs> degrees right now, so it's a little hot. I'm sure inside I'll be able to put it on, but I'm very excited. I'm here with some friends today, and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so I will have all the facts, probably too many facts. Fact number one, Ravenclaw is the best house. Stay tuned for more. This is the crew. We have every house represented. Yo. Slytherin, Gryffindor, Slytherin again, Gryffindor again. Oh my god. Hufflepuff. Of Hufflepuff course. with the non Hufflepuff alpha, very Hufflepuff, and. If you're wondering what this place is exactly, it's basically a museum dedicated to the Harry Potter movies with a lot of the actual sets they use to film the movies uh, sprinkled throughout. I have an audio guide, but I don't need it. Do you need it, Darcy? Yes. <laughs> yes. What's Harry Potter? I'm an expert. I'll be very offended if anyone in our group gets an audio guide. Hanako, are you gonna? This is the main area before you actually enter the tour itself. They have a food hall here and of course access to the gift shop early on. I think we're in a holding room. There's like a bunch of people. Oh, there's the guy. And I think we're about to start going to like the main set of Harry Potter. Past Alyssa was correct. Um, after you enter the tour, you go through a series of holding rooms where they kind of separate the groups out so you don't have a horde of people coming in all at once. Bragging about how I learned how to tie a tie and Georgie was like, it sucks. <laughs> so he redid it. Does it look better now? It does look pretty nice. Thank you <laughs> for making it all sweaty. <laughs> he did it on himself. <laughs> ホークスタジオ First room is the Great Hall, one of the most famous sets in all of Hogwarts. They have a bunch of different houses and costumes that different professors wore. We have from order, let's see if I can name them all. Madame Pomfrey, Professor Trelawney, Professor Sprout, Professor McGonagall, Professor Dumbledore, Professor Snape, Professor Flitwick, and Hagrid, of course. So I mentioned to my friends that if I went to Hogwarts, I would have enjoyed lunch a lot more because I could have it in the Great Hall. And they told me like their lunches in high school were like an hour long. An hour? Mine were 20 minutes, tops. Is that normal? Is my high school a weird one? My lunch was only 20 minutes, but did you guys actually have an hour for lunch? That's crazy. So we're in the grand staircase, and of course it's famous for having all the different portraits and they move, and there's a photo studio over there where you can go and like get yourself filmed and then you'll show up as one of the portraits. So we're gonna try that, see if yeah. you can become famous. Famous, yeah. <laughs> This is us. Whoa. So good. We spotted Yay. us behind. Here we are. I'm sure Mona Lisa is turning over in her grave. Anyways, next is the Gryffindor common room introduced here by the fat lady. This is Sarah's home. What do you think of your room? Ah, sweet home. You know, it feels like it's been so long since I got to, you know, really? sit down and relax. So I've always loved the Gryffindor dormitories because from here you can extrapolate the entire population of Hogwarts. So basically there's five beds here in the boys Gryffindor dormitory for this one year. So let's say there's the same number of girls and guys. So that is 10 total beds for let's say first years in Gryffindor. Then times seven because there's seven years total in Hogwarts year one through seven. And then times four because there's four houses, right? So that is a total of 280. So the entire student population of Hogwarts is 280 in this giant ass castle. It's a little insane. The entire population of the UK is 67.3 million. So that means that 0. 
of the UK population goes to Hogwarts. Next we have the Quidditch exhibit and the main thing you can do here is you can go and actually simulate being in the crowds for a Quidditch match. They'll film you and then they'll put you on green screen here and they'll splice you into the movie as a cheering and dodging crowd because Quidditch actually seems very dangerous to be a player of or a spectator of, honestly. Next we have a prop exhibit dedicated to the fourth Harry Potter movie, Goblet of Fire. Something that's really cool is a lot of these props here were used in the actual movies themselves. So here, like, look, it's Daniel Radcliffe's actual hair that he wore in the mo No, I'm just kidding, obviously it's a, it's a wig, but that would be really cool if we actually could get Daniel Radcliffe's actual hair. My best subject, potions, of course. Right now, I'm making a matcha flavored latte. It's gonna be really good. What do you think? Would you try it? <laughs> I really like this display. It's all the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher and they changed every single year due to various reasons, of course. And I was like, where's Quirrell, the very first Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher? And then I realized you look off a bit to the left of the exhibit and here he is, he's hiding in the shadows, which if you've seen the movies is very true to his character. To know a fun Voldemort fact. So everyone says Voldemort, but it's actually supposed to be pronounced the French way, Voldemort. Oh, uh, without the silent T. Yeah, it's supposed to be Did silent T. Mm -hmm. Somehow, even though JK Rowling was a big part of the first like film, it slipped past everything. They say Voldemort in the film and it's stuck and that's what it is now Voldemort. Yeah. I kind of like that yeah it sounds more like it's because it's French so Deafening. it feels fancier oh I yeah. thought it sounds scary oh yeah French people are scary so that's why wow <laughs> I, I don't well, I mean French friends are gonna love me I, I do they agree with me <laughs> time for the forbidden forest also known as a lawsuit just waiting to happen right outside of Hogwarts this is one of the most immersive areas I think in the entire tour the other sets you could tell they were sets, you know, you could look up to the ceiling and see the infrastructure. This one was extremely immersive in that there are sounds echoing in the distance, a dark mysterious atmosphere, and a feeling of being lost. Um, and that's not just because my friends left me here and I couldn't find them and I was wandering around wondering where the rest of my group was. That wasn't the only reason, you know, just like Harry in the first movie, no. Um, <laughs> but this area had a really cool vibe and a dark mysterious feeling to it and i think this area is really dedicated to making you feel like you got lost in the forbidden forest so halfway through they have a little cafe and you can get butter beer tastes nothing like actual beer so the reason it tastes nothing like actual beer is because it's not actual beer. It's a really, really, really sweet drink, but they do let you wash it here and let you take home the cup. So that is a bonus. So we've come to the Harry Potter cafe. It's kind of, it's themed like half Herbology, half Care Magical Creatures class. So the two kind of outdoorsy classes. And they have four different main options, a Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin option. So of course, being a Ravenclaw, we got the Gryffindor option because the Gryffindor wanted it. Isn't that right? No, that's not true. That's what happened, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the food just came, so we're gonna try it. And there's these really cute Hedgewig cakes that I think we're gonna get because we've seen them and they are just adorable. Ready the very fancy Gryffindor plate. Review. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's fine, it's yeah. It's roast beef, it's like, it's pretty good, but for the price that it was, you're probably paying a little more for the Harry Potter name brand mm -hmm. than Agreed. you are the exact quality. It's not exactly Wagyu. Like, it's not A5 <laughs> Wagyu <laughs> or anything, but... I feel like the gravy elevates it a lot. The gravy does, does. elevate everything. That's, yeah. the, that's, that's the secret. That's a British secret. <laughs> the British secret. The Breaker. <laughs> the Breakway. <laughs> the Breakway. <laughs> not to be confused with Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, are you okay? I'm alive. She just, she's like, oh, what's this? I'm like, oh, Sarah, it's horse, it's horseradish. She's like, oh, okay, it's the whole thing. <laughs> in her mouth, and she's like, ah, and I'm like, why'd you eat it? I said it was horseradish. I, and my mind didn't register what it was. I was like, horseradish. 
Huh. And then my mouth like tasted it. I was like, oh, that's wasabi. <laughs> we got our super special cake. Look, our Hedgewig cake. Look how cute it is. It's so beautiful. So we're trying it. Mm, it's sponge cake with a bunch of different fruits. There's raspberries, blueberries. Oh, I want to have a blueberry too. Oh, how's the blueberry? Oh. Good. I feel my eyes are already getting better. Your eyes are getting... It helps with your eyesight. That sounds made up. It's not. It's a, it's a health benefit of blueberries. So on the outside section, they have a lot of outside exhibits, like the night bus. Fun fact about the night bus, in the movie, they made it by taking a real England double liquor bus, splicing it apart, and sticking a like separate level in the middle. So it's like a real triple-decker bus that they used, that they built from two uh, England double-decker buses. Here we have Harry's muggle adopted parents' house. Uh, I have a question. Is this like what normal houses in England look like, or was this made to look like as basic cookie cutter depressing of a house as possible i'm just curious um because it looks like a normal house but also it has a sense of i would say despair that i wouldn't think most houses in england actually have are we in this look it's my friends hi friends we are Different houses, but you know, technically, oh, they're like both Gryffindors. Yeah. So, this is awkward. oh, god, yeah, bye. Oh, <laughs> we're at the Harry Potter Bridge, and I think it's one of my favorites as well. Sarah's so saying the same thing, and I really like bridges, maybe because like they're long and life's <laughs> long, so bridges are like life, and people love metaphors. Maybe that's why bridges are so well represented in media because they're long and they cross over rivers. Right, know. that was the biggest bullshit. <laughs> you can't talk during my shot. What are you doing? <laughs> Here we are at the most famous train in the world. The Hogwarts Express. Hopefully no Dementors attack us. Ah! Do you know, what's your Patronus? Do you have a Patronus? I do not. What would your spirit animal be? A Shiba Inu. <laughs> Doesn't sound very like I knew that, I knew that. I should have guessed that. No, we're, we're screwed. <laughs> what's yours? Um, well, I took a quiz on Pottermore. You can take a, a Patronus quiz and mine was a cat. That's also, yeah, we're screwed. Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, rip. Okay, oh well. To our death, let's go. On the train. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. <laughs> Where is it going to take us? Hogwarts or Dreams, finally? Oh, that's Shinjuku. Oh, Where that's all trains true. in Tokyo end up. That is true. All trains in Tokyo end up in Shinjuku. Each compartment has a different scene from a Harry Potter movie, but I'm sorry, quick diatribe. Why do the students get to Hogwarts using a train when you have flu powder, teleportation, literally all these magical ways? A train makes no sense. This is the flu powder, so this is how you should get around Hogwarts. You know, it would be a lot faster than that staircase that always moves and stuff. This is the Ministry of Magic, or the government of the Wizarding World. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of jokes I can make here, but listen, I'm, I'm American, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on all the uh, political jokes. Uh, I'm sure you understand, thank you very much. A part of this tour that I feel like doesn't get talked enough about are the amazing artisans who created these 3D models and puppets that were actually used in the movies. In the first seven Harry Potter movies, these were real puppets. They weren't even CGI figures. And the amazing artistry that went behind them is mind-blowing, especially this Hagrid's head here. Um, a lot of times when Hagrid, because he's supposed to be a giant, was in a scene with a normal actor, they actually used a puppet instead of the actor himself to get the scale correctly, which is insane. It wasn't actually the actor himself. Another amazing behind the scenes is the art of Foley, which is creating all the tiny little sounds you don't even think about. For example, this guy here created the sound of a dragon flapping its wings by just 
shaking a blanket a couple times. Um, and they create all the sounds that you don't even register in your brain using just everyday household items. We're at Diagon Alley where they sell things so rare you can't even get them off Amazon. It's that crazy. I don't actually have a lot to say here. I just really like Diagon Alley because I feel like it's a place where the magic of this wizarding world or any fantasy world takes the form of, you know, something I recognize and could almost walk through if I just happened to stumble across the right street in London. Step up, we got fighting fences. Those blue blue girls are just in top of school. Duking pistols. Get yours today. <laughs> What else could the last exhibit be except for a full-sized replica of the Hogwarts castle itself in all its glory? Look at this school. Now think of where you went to high school. Yeah, life's unfair. I get it. Me too. I said last exhibit, but of course there is a gift shop. I mean, it's like the credits, right? Movies have credits, theme parks have gift shops. Yay, finally some Ravenclaw representation. This merch is actually quite nice. Okay, I told myself I wasn't going to get anything in the gift shop, but I'm weak and Anime Snape is kawaii, so I think I'm going to get this t-shirt. Nice, do it. It's only sun's in, or 3,000 yen, so like 22, 3 dollars, so not that bad for a gift shop actually, so. Snape. Not a good person, but a good character. That's the distinction. finished we came out the gift shop which of course was the last bit what was your favorite part I had so many I really yeah. like the train I like the Hogwarts like outdoor bridge space I think we have like the yeah. same ones especially for me at the end the last castle where they have the full size of Hogwarts we were walking like before we got in that room we're like oh I think we've seen everything what else could there be and then we walk in and it's the castle and we're like ah uh, uh, we had simultaneous course. like reaction yeah also course. um Diagon Alley was awesome oh yeah Diagon Alley awesome yeah. well anyways we loved it we'll definitely come back because we live in Tokyo yeah. and we can do that and take more time to look at things yeah we got here like halfway through the day which is good because it wasn't as crowded but i feel like at the end we were kind of like watching the time a little bit yeah so um, we'll definitely come back there's definitely more we can see that mm. we kind of rushed through a little bit but it was amazing definitely come here even if you're like a mild harry potter fan <laughs> yeah this will make you a bigger one yeah for sure and go home and binge the movies yes that's, that's what now, we're tonight. gonna do <laughs> yeah, tonight all eight in one go all right done it bye, bye.